pick up kind of where we left off. Um, if you remember before lunch, we were working on um, adding in some base map data and we had uh, put in our, our districts and we put in um, some sections inside of that. And now we'll pick up where we left off and we can uh, delineate some uh, planting beds in there and uh, the pathway and kind of fill in the rest of the, the space in that, uh, in that uh, area there. All right, so if you don't have it uh, open already, uh, we're going to reopen ArcMap. So if you closed it, you can go to the Start menu, to All Programs, to ArcGIS, and to ArcMap 10. I left mine open here. And this is what should come up when you open it. If, um, is there anybody who did close ArcMap? Raise your hand. Okay, good. So you guys all have it up now? Excellent. Okay, so now if we, I think before lunch I had you guys turn off the sections feature class. We can turn that back on to kind of get familiar with what we've done here. So we divided this one district into two sections. And now we're going to focus on the, um, the South Ericaceae East section here and uh, we'll draw in uh, the pathway that kind of uh, cuts the uh, cuts this area in kind of three pieces and then we'll delineate the uh, planting beds that kind of make up the majority of the rest of the area. So to do that let's add in uh, a couple more feature classes. So let's, uh, let's start with the planting areas. So uh, if you go under the selection menu uh, there's a uh, the add data button. Let's click on that. And then it should open and back up to the, uh, the base map feature data set in our uh, geo database. But if it doesn't, you can hit the drop down here. And at the top, you should see our uh, public gardens workshop uh, folder. Or uh, even down lower, there's folder connections. You can click on this guy, go into UC Davis, Arboretum, go into our geo database, and go into our base map feature data set. Yeah. How um, do you define base map? is actually kind of, it's kind of a funny term that's used loosely in here. The, the, the way that it, we have base map for this feature data set, which is a folder full of stuff, is a, is a little bit um, um, misleading. But generally, base map is thought of, of kind of like background information uh, for your map. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit misleading, some of the terminology here, um, or the use of that term. But, um, Anyway, let's uh, go through, once we're in our base map feature data set, let's scroll over to the right. And until we get to the planting area feature data set. And, or excuse me, uh, polygon feature class. We'll click on planting area and hit add. And you can see that adds into our table of contents. Um, categorized by the different subtypes we have available. So uh, for planting areas, it could be uh, of a, a soil uh, type planting area. It could be turf for lawn areas. Uh, it could be wild for kind of a uh, unmanaged or uh, wildflower or meadow area. And then you can have a mixed type um, and always the ever-present unknown and other types for uh, things that are not able to be categorized. Um, <clears throat> so what we want to do is create uh, uh, planting areas of the soil date of the soil type uh, for these areas that we have here, and uh, to get started doing that, we have to go into edit mode. So from our editor toolbar, you can click on the editor menu, click start editing. <coughs> And as before, you see that it, we don't have any templates available for our, our planting area uh, feature class. So what we might want to do first here is um, change any of these symbols to what um, we'd like them to see. So as we're going to be drawing in the planting areas, it um, might be handy if we can see through these a little bit more so they don't obscure any of our work. So <clears throat> this time I'm going to go into the properties of this planting area and make it transparent so that we can see through it. <clears throat> Instead of doing a hollow boundary as we've done with previous ones, we'll uh, try a slightly different method. So you can double click on the word planting area in the table of contents. And then go to the display tab. <clears throat> and on the display tab, uh, you see at the top it says uh, transparent. You can put a percentage in here. I'm just going to uh, go with 50%. That'll make it 
50% transparent. And we'll click on OK. And then <clears throat> um, we can start drawing this and then it won't obscure um, what's underneath it so much. So uh, if we go over to our Create Features palette, so we said that there's no template available, so we have to create a new template for this so we can start drawing these guys in. So to do that, go to the Organize Templates button at the top, and click New Template, and then select our planting area, feature class or layer, and then unselect anything else that may be checked and hit finish and close. And now we've got templates available to create any of these uh, planting area subtypes. <clears throat> okay, so to start getting, get started drawing in the, the soil planting areas, we'll select soil from uh, the list of templates. And we can start drawing, and if, since we're gonna, I'm gonna start with this kind of triangular looking uh, uh, planting area down in the, the lower left here, and I'm gonna zoom into this guy first. So I'm gonna grab the zoom in tool, and click and drag a rectangle around it. This will give us a little bit more control um, as we're uh, trying to draw this in. So again, I'll pick the soil template to start drawing. And then we're going to want these planting areas to, uh, to snap to the edge of uh, the sections that we've drawn in already. So I'm going to start um, on the edge here and find a, ve a vertex that I, uh, that I can snap to. It says Section Vertex. And then click and start. And using that same trick we did before, we can press V to show the existing vertices on this guy. And then start placing vertices every so often and draw this guy in. And when I'm along an edge of the section, I'll use my V key to show these vertices. And when I get back to the beginning here, I'll double click to finish that guy off. Yeah, it will do that. The V just makes it so you can see where they are. So you can you can go through this whole process probably without pressing the V, but it's handy to see where they are. Is it um, is to do more vertex marks or, or not? No, you can generally do the, the, the same amount as you already have on there, but it, the more vertices you do um, gives you a little finer control over how curves are and stuff. So if you're going around a curved area, you probably want to put more vertices in. But then when you're along a straight area, you probably want to put less in so you get straighter lines. Okay, so once you're done drawing in this planting area, I want to go through the same kind of process and we're going to add uh, attributes to this guy. So to do that, um, since we've uh, closed some stuff out here or stopped editing, we have to reopen the attributes window. And to do that, we go to the editor toolbar, almost all the way over to the right, and click on the attributes button here. And then it brings up a list of attributes for this guy. And if you remember, our rule is that we're setting the planting area ID equal to the object ID. The type of planting area is already filled in because we selected soil as our template when we started drawing this stuff, so that's already filled in for us. And then we can give it a name. Um, generally, you know, you, you can choose not to name these planting areas if you want, but if you have a name that people use and your horticulture staff is familiar with, you can type that in here. Um, maybe representative of what kind of plants are in this area. Um, so you could make one up. Anybody have one they want to contribute? What kind of plants do we have in this? What do we want to name this guy? <laughs> what was that? Southwest Corner. Southwest Corner, there you go. Yesterday it was pansies, so. <laughs> and then 
this has a, another field here for section ID, and it lets us enter the ID number of the section that this planting area is part of, so then it will link all this stuff together for us. And uh, if we want to figure out, we've forgotten what the ID number is <coughs> for, that, for this section that this planting area is in, we can use the identify tool, which is the blue circle with the white eye in it, and just click on the, in the section, and the identify tool will bring up the attributes of this section and tell us that this ID is one. So we'll just use one and enter the number one in this box and that will link this planting area to that section. <coughs> All right, now I'm gonna repeat this process two more times and draw in the other planting areas we have. So. First I'm going to use the uh, back, back to previous extent blue arrow here to zoom back out. You could also uh, press full extent if you want and then I'm going to zoom in to uh, this next area. I'm going to draw this planting area in down in kind of the other corner. I'll draw a rectangle around it. And then to get started drawing it, I'll go to the Create Features palette here, select my soil template, and then start drawing stuff in at whatever point feels comfortable to you. Trace along the edge. When I get to the edge of the section, I'll use my V key to display my vertices so I can snap right to it and make a nice clean boundary. Feature construction is annoying. Yeah, so there, if that toolbar is in your way, it's generally, you can put it to the other side of the direction you're going and, and get it out of your way. There's also an option buried in the, the program a little bit to actually turn that whole thing off if you want. To make it so that you can see more? Yeah, yeah so if you want to do that ahead of time, you actually have to change your template here. So um, you can click. There's not like a function. I, I wish there was. That would make things a lot more simple because it kind of obscures where you're trying to draw sometimes, right? So that's actually one of the reasons I'm, we made it transparent ahead of time. But you can make it hollow um, while you're drawing it and then it wouldn't obscure at all. So, but the for purposes of today's workshop, we're just kind of doing the, uh, the quick and dirty so the accuracy is not that important. Yeah, did you have a question? I can't, how do you get the tool to outline it again? Mm. Sure. Okay, sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now again, once we finish drawing in this guy, the next step is to add attributes to him. So we'll click on the Attributes palette down in the lower right hand corner. And we'll follow our rule of setting the planting area ID or just the ID number equal to the object ID. So we'll give that a two. And Mary, do you have a name for this planting area for us? <laughs> Southeast. Southeast. Corner? <laughs> no. Sure, all right, we're going with corner. And then again, to be able to link this uh, planting area up with the, uh, with the section, we want to enter the section ID, and I remember from identifying it last time that the number is one for that. And we'll hit enter, and now that'll be linked together. Okay. No. 
the mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lots of leaves yeah. at the bottom there. I think I'm so, not If you've got the attributes entered on this uh, second planting area here, we can repeat this process one more time to add in the third one. So I'm going to use my back to previous extent button here, zoom out. <coughs> then I'm going to zoom in to this last planting area here so it fits nicely on the screen. And then we're going to repeat the process. We'll go to the Create Features palette, grab our template for soil, snap to the edge, and I'm going to start drawing this guy in. Placing vertices at kind of regular intervals. If you get to the edge and you see that there is more to trace and that's kind of off of your screen, uh, a neat little tool is you can, uh, you can, or trick is you can press the C key and that turns your cursor into the hand which is the pan tool and then you can click and drag and move the image over so that you can see what you're doing and then release the C key and then you're back where you left off and ready to just continue tracing. Yeah. When you get back to the beginning, double click to finish it off. <laughs> and when you've got this guy all finished, you can click on the attributes tab down here in the lower right okay, good. Thank you. and enter the attributes in the same fashion that we've been doing. We'll set the, the ID equal to the object ID. Mm -hmm. And Mary is going to provide us with a name for this one. North Strip. North Strip. <laughs> South section. <laughs> South River Bank. <coughs> South River Bank. And we'll enter an ID. For the section, which I remember is one, you can use the identify tool to find that if you need to. And then we're all done with this guy. All right, then I'm going to hit my full extent button here, the globe icon off the toolbar to zoom out and see what we've done. I may actually zoom in a little further so we can get a closer look. And it looks from, from this that I've done a pretty good job here, but if I zoomed in, maybe not as good, but this will do. <coughs> and then that leaves us kind of with uh, two little chunks of area left here. We've got the water body that we could draw in uh, in this pathway. <coughs> and then we've pretty much covered all the things that are on the ground in this particular spot besides our plants. So the next thing is let's draw in this pathway on here and um, before we do that there's there's two different feature classes in the data model that are um, that are designed to hold two different uh, types of things related to, to uh, pathways. So we've got one called pavement segment which is meant for holding anything that's paved uh, and then we've got another for trail that's meant for uh, storing anything that's not paved. So in this case, I know that this particular uh, thing is asphalt, and uh, so we're going to want to use the pavement segment feature class to uh, be able to draw that stuff in. 
So if you hit the Add Data button under the Selection menu here, go into our Geo Database. It should right open up right to our Base Map Feature Data Set. We can scroll over until we find Pavement Segment Feature Class. Select it and then hit the Add button. And that adds that into our table of contents over here on the left. We'll see that the pavement segment feature class has all kinds of different subtypes that come in uh, for this guy that are already categorized here. So uh, it could be, uh, your pavement could be a bridge, it could be a dock or a pier, uh, it could be a driveway, uh, it could be a parking lot, uh, it could be a pathway as we're going to use for this particular example. Uh, maybe a patio or a terrace, uh, a ramp, yeah, a road, or a sidewalk, and we've defined sidewalks as being any kind of uh, you know pathway that's alongside of a road. So sidewalks are always parallel to a road, but pathways kind of are independent. So in this case, we'll use pathway. Um, could be a sport surface like a tennis court or a basketball court or a stairway, and then there's another category for all of the things there. So to get started drawing this guy in, we're going to need to again create a template for it. If we go to our Create Features palette here, we'll see that it didn't automatically create a template. So we'll click on the Organize Template button, go to New Template, and then just as before, we're going to select Pavement Segment that we want to create a template for, uncheck anything else and hit the finish button and then the close button. And now we can create any of these features we want. When you create a template now for, uh, that's a pathway, would you use that same yeah, anytime. So these templates are kind of uh, particular to this map document that we've saved here. So when we save this, these templates will save with it. Um, and the next time we open it, we can use it to create a pathway or a sidewalk or whatever we want to create. Yeah, it'll be there for us. But if we started a new map document and we added this pavement segment feature class into that and wanted to create stuff that with, um, in that document, we'd have to recreate these templates. So they're particular to each map document. Why did we create a template for something? Um, so the, it, when we first started out, we, we added in area of interest in the district feature classes um, when we, um, and then we started editing and then it automatically created those templates for us. Um, but once you're already in edit mode, it no longer cre automatically creates them. It's kind of a funny way that the program operates. Um, so we have to create them each time we want to uh, start editing something, uh, a new thing. Does that make sense at all? Well, you created the ones, the area of interest, because there were certain qualities about it that you wanted to be consistent with. Yeah. 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 Um, no, these ones for, the, the, we created this, ter this template for area interest, it just created it automatically when we started editing. So I haven't done, we've been, we've created these ones um, as we've been going pretty much all day today. None of these were pre-created for us. So. Alternatively, you had added all of your classes. Right. Before you started editing at all. Right, yeah. So the point, right. Yeah, if you don't want to, if you, if you want ArcMap to create all these for you, one option is to add them all in, then start editing, and we'll automatically create them all for you. But we've been kind of doing it piecemeal, just one at a time, to, to kind of go through to see how it will do it for you, and also to see how, what the steps are to create them yourself. Yeah, I think at the beginning, when you know, okay, I want to map this, 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 and this, you pick your 10 things, you would add them to the map and start editing, and then you wouldn't have to. Do and then you wouldn't have to do this every time, yeah. But it's important to know that how to create them if you get in that spot because you're inevitably going to forget to add something yeah, and going to have to go through that process. This, this uh, editing with templates is a relatively new feature to uh, ArcGIS and probably could use a little bit more revision in the, the workflow of it and I imagine that it will probably continue to get better as uh, the time goes on here. Okay, so now we've created our, our templates for um, our pavement and we can select our pathway template and start drawing in our, our pathway as kind of remaining area here. So again, you can click and use the V key to snap to things or to see where your vertices are and basically just trace in the empty area here that we haven't filled in. And you may want to zoom in to get a better look at things. So 
when you're zoomed this far out, you may find that your cursor will snap to things that maybe you didn't want it to. So it's a good, it's a good idea to be zoomed in. Now if you are zoomed in and you need to pan around, you can press and hold that C key and that will let you uh, use the pan tool temporarily to move your window. How do you make them disappear from, when you press the V key, you generally can let go of it and they should go away, but sometimes it, it acts a little funky and you can just press the V key on and off until they kind of disappear. And remember that we'll double click to stop. If you've placed a vertice in the wrong spot while you're going, you can use the, uh, the undo button to delete that vertice. But once you've closed it, then you can use the edit tool to be able to double click on that and see those vertices again if you need to move any of them. If there's one you'd like to delete after you finished it, then uh, you can uh, right click on that vertice and select delete vertex. If you need to add one in, uh, you can right click on somewhere on the line that there isn't one and uh, select insert vertex. All right, once you've finished drawing that guy in, we're going to follow kind of the same process we've been going through. We're going to go to the Attributes tab, and we can start entering attributes for this. And now you'll see, unlike all the other feature classes we worked with so far today, the Pavement Segment feature class has lots of different uh, options for things on here. Lots of different attributes that we can enter. And uh, as usual at the top, we've got a ID field that will set equal to the object ID. Just put in one. And you'll see that the type field has already been uh, populated for us since we selected the pathway template. It already knew that it was a pathway, so that filled that in for us. And then we can have a, we have a field for a name. If you want to name this thing, I'm just going to call it the South Air KCE Pathway. And then you can select a construction type for this. Right now it defaulted to pavers, but we're going to click on this and you'll see that there's a drop down list. And this is a, one of those domains that we talked about. And it allows us to pick a material type from this list. And I happen to know that this is asphalt, so I'm going to select asphalt for this one. And then if we had information on the date that this thing was constructed, um, or if we had a link to a construction document or an as-built drawing for this, we could type that link into this box here and create a link to that document. If we know any information about recent maintenance that's been performed on it, we can enter that in the next three fields. Uh, same thing for inspection. If there are any sp inspections performed on this, uh, we could enter that information here. There's a uh, field for the construction condition. Um, Mia, what condition is this? particular pathway in? Very poor. It's in very poor condition. So maybe we need to go do something about that before someone trips and sues us. Um, that's right. Then, then we're off the hook, right? Yeah. yeah. That means we know about it. That's right. And if you trip, it's your fault because we spray painted it. So. <laughs> Um, there's information here about uh, predicted conditions. Some uh, larger institutions will use software to manage their, their pavement as we do at UC Davis and you can fill in things about condition. Yeah? Would the document link, when you click on it, it just lets you type, you type in the files? Yeah, you would type in, you could, in those fields you could type in a link to a document on your computer. Um, so uh, you could copy the path name. Um, and paste it in there, or you could be a URL to a document on the internet or on your web server. And then uh, there's actually a, a hyperlink tool. Um, if you look next to the uh, identify tool on our toolbar, there's this little lightning bolt tool, and you would use that and it would allow you to link to those documents. 
I mean, even though we don't have a specific place for just photographs, you could put a photograph in a document. Sure, you could add, yeah, you could do that, or you could easily add a new field called photo or whatever you like, um, and then put a link into that photograph as well. Yeah. But you could have a picture of the yes. asphalt maintenance needs yeah. and put that in the document and then just make it part. You sure could, yep. It's not function for um, section or, or district, the way that when we created a section and found it for what Oh, uh, yeah. Let's, let me finish going through the attributes here and we'll get to that. Yeah. So for next stage inspection, you can have a report come up the first of the month that these are the things that need to be inspected this month? Um, you could set that up, yeah. So you could create reports um, that, you know, selected anything that has, you know, uh, next maintenance date or next inspection date, um, you know, in, in a certain time period and it would easily select those or you could select those things. You're doing a, kind of the method that we select, we did this morning by selecting by attributes and select dates between a certain range. So there's many ways that you can get at that information, yeah. If we keep going down, you see there's other fields. If this were a parking lot, we've got some fields for uh, the type of parking lot, whether it's got a fee structure in place, how many spaces it has. Um, some fields for if it's a bridge, uh, what kind of capacity does it have, some uh, traffic information if it were a road. So lots of different fields in this guy. As we get towards the bottom, uh, there's a field for pervious. A lot of times it's good to know how much pervious and impervious surface you have for runoff. Um, at your garden or uh, institution, so you could uh, change the pervious type. I know this one's not pervious, so I'm going to select no from the drop down list. Is it ADA accessible? So, uh, can people in wheelchairs safely uh, go on this? Um, you can put, I'm not sure if this one is, so I'm going to put no, or I can leave it blank as the null value. If there's a contact name, a person that's uh, in charge of uh, maintaining this, you could uh, enter their name here. And then there's a number of other things uh, that we could do with this. So there's lots of information in this feature class. And you asked about uh, whether you can link this to uh, the uh, district or a section. And um, there's not actually anything in this one. We're not linking this one to the section as we've done uh, in previous ones. There is a, a method to do that with some other feature classes, but we're not going to cover that one today. Yeah? And if you wanted to add the photo field like he mentioned, how would you do that? Yeah, we can take a foray. I'll just uh, give you a quick demo here. You don't have to follow along on this one. Um, to be able to add fields to stuff, you would have to first stop editing. And then, because you can't have somebody editing something while you're trying to make changes to the way the database is organized, then you would open up the table by right-clicking on the, the name of the feature class or layer in the table of contents. And then you can see all the fields here in, in tabular format. And from the little menu here up in the upper left, there's a, uh, it's grayed out right now because I'm editing, but you can do add field. And then when I ask you, what do you want to call the fields? Um, what type of data does it store? Is it numbers? Is it letters? Is it a text? Whatever. Uh, you select the appropriate type and then name it what you'd like. And then you could use that photo to, or that field to store a link to your photo. Or there's even a type that will let you store the photo directly in that field. Uh, it's a raster type. Um, so a couple different options there, and you can always search the, uh, the uh, ArcGIS help to find out uh, how to do any of that kind of stuff. The existing document link could solve that purpose. Sure, yeah, you could definitely use it in that respect if you'd like, yeah. Any other questions about that? Okay. So now we've pretty much drawn in uh, all the stuff on here, and I remember yesterday we had a question about... Um, about labeling, and I don't think I've talked about that too much today. So um, one of the things we can do with each one of these layers, if we double click on it here, we bring up our layer properties. And as we were going through these tabs, I think we got sidetracked and uh, didn't get to the labels tab. But if you click on the labels tab here, the option to, to label um, features any way you'd like. So um, I actually want to uh, we'll put the name on uh, this pathway here can see that it says the label field is pavement segment name. That's good. That's the field that we type the name in. And generally, this will always default to, uh, to the field that has the name in it. And simply, we just have to turn on the label features in this layer, and it'll try to draw those labels in. And we could change the font and the symbol uh, and color and uh, text on this if you'd like. But we'll just hit OK. 
and you'll see that it writes the name in on that pathway for us. And if we want to turn those labels off, you can quickly do so by right-clicking on the name of the layer and unclicking label features there. And we could do the same thing for the planting areas. We're going to just assume that the name field is set up as a default, so I'll right-click on it, hit label features, and then it draws in those uh, names for us that we assigned to those planting areas. Okay, so that's pretty much all the base map data we're going to add today. We could draw in the waterway if we want, but we're just going to focus on the, uh, on the dry earth uh, for the moment.